Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we continue during this Lenten season, we come to one of the, um, probably one of the most famous passages in the Gospel of John. As our Lord resurrects Lazarus after he's been dead in a tomb for four days, and, and what that reveals for us, and what our Lord has in store for us as Christians. You know, in our present circumstances, COVID-19 rages across the globe and across the world, and even more importantly here in, in the state of New York, it's really hard not to become preoccupied with the concept of death, with, with our mortality. And our, that isn't helped, I know, by our media, which focuses on the grim details of this epidemic, almost the exclusion of everything else. And usually as you're watching TV, they've got the world incidence of COVID along with the death rate and the U.S. incidence of COVID along with the death rate in the U.S. in a big red box on the, on the side of the screen. And so it's very easy for us, I think, to feel as though we're living in the valley of the shadow of death, collectively yearning for better days, uh, wishing for the recent past before all of this happened when the troubles of those days seem so small compared to today's troubles. And so in our anxiety, in our present distress, we call out in the words of the psalmist today, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. And yet we know, we know that our Lord has heard our pleas, heard our cry for mercy, even before we open our mouth. His heart is filled with compassion for us and for his whole creation. And that's what we see revealed in our gospel text today from John chapter 11. That's what we see most poignantly revealed as we see our Lord's reaction to Lazarus' death. The shortest verse in the English New Testament is John eleven thirty five. 35, part of our reading today. It says simply, Jesus wept. And those words, just those two words, encapsulate for us very clearly our Lord's emotion as he viewed the carnage that sin produces. The death, famine, disease, the brokenness that sin, that sin brings into our world. And that compassion, our Lord's compassion, caused him to act on our behalf, to take our cause upon himself, to deliver us out of the world of death at the cost of his own life. Our Lord is all about bringing life out of death. And we see that throughout the pages of Scripture. Our Lord has always been about bringing life out of death, out of the death that our sin brings. From the very first pages of Scripture, we go all the way back to Genesis 3, um, our Lord has been about our deliverance. In Genesis 3, the first promise of the Savior is given. Third chapter of the whole Bible. Even before we see the effect of our sin, Adam and Eve haven't been kicked out of the garden, death has not taken place yet, and our Lord is already promising that there is going to be deliverance, that he is going to bring life out of the death that we just brought. And it comes as he's cursing the serpent, which of course is Satan. And as he's cursing the serpent, he says, I will put enmity, that is, I will put hatred or division or strife, but I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head you shall bruise his heel. And the rest of scripture, as you have all heard me say over and over again, is about how God kept that promise first made in the Garden of Eden to Adam and Eve just after they sinned the first time. The rest of scripture is revealing for us how God kept that promise, that he brought the offspring of the woman. And when we hear offspring of the woman in Genesis 3.15, think virgin birth. Why was our Lord born of the Virgin Mary? Because that's part of the prophecy. He is the offspring of the woman. And the offspring of the woman has come to crush the serpent's head, or to defeat Satan and liberate his people. And throughout the rest of Scripture, we see that same theme played over and over and over again as God brings life out of the death that our sin creates. Look at our Old Testament lesson from today, from Ezekiel. 
Again, another famous passage, the Valley of Dry Bones. And it's written at a time when the Israelites are languishing in their 70-year captivity under the Babylonian uh, Empire. And the people, of course, are very disheartened. They are without hope. They're wondering if they're ever going to get back to Israel. And they are feeling, and they are spiritually dead. And in that, in that spiritually dead condition, God tells Ezekiel to prophesy. And he shows him a vision of the valley full of dry bones. And he says, prophesy over the bones. And that word of God brings life where there had only once been death. And our Lord promises to Ezekiel, to the nation of Israel through Ezekiel, to restore life and hope to a people whose rebellion had created the, the situation they were in. The rebellion had already brought death. The Lord promises through Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves, and I will raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. Over and over, the narrative of Scripture reveals that God brings life out of death, and that furthermore, God is not deaf to our, to our suffering and our pain. So why did our Lord weep? If we turn our attention back to John 11, to our gospel lesson, why did our Lord weep at the tomb of Lazarus? Was he completely unaware of the fact that in a few minutes he was going to raise him from the dead anyway? Not at all. I don't, I don't believe that to be the case. Of course he knew exactly what he was going to do, that he was going to bring Lazarus back from the dead. But this is a moment where our Lord identifies with his creation, where he, a moment of deep connection as he witnesses the separation that sin and death cause. Our Lord weeps, not only for Lazarus, but our Lord weeps for all of us, for the plight of his creation that has to go through the separation of death because of sin. And just as our Lord's words spoke creation into existence in Genesis 1, when he said, let there be light, and there was light, and just as the Lord's words brought life back to the valley of dry bones in our Old Testament lesson from Ezekiel, so our Lord speaks in the Gospel of John, and life is created, given life to a body that has been dead for four days. The Lord says, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus comes out, alive and healthy. And our Lord has words of life for us, too. In the midst of the unending reports of death that we face day in and day out as we go through this, this time dealing with COVID and the coronavirus, our Lord has words of comfort for us. Our, Lord's have, our Lord has words of peace that sustain us and give us hope. And just as God brought creation into existence through his word, and he brought the valley of dry bones to life through his word, and he brought Lazarus back to life through the power of his word, so our Lord has spoken life into each and every one of us. And he has brought life out of death for, for us. Paul reminds us in, this, in 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That irrespective of what may befall us in this lifetime, our eternal destiny is secure. Once again, using Paul's words from Romans chapter 8, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, says Paul, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ, the love of God in Christ our Lord. Beloved in the Lord, you are God's, and he has given the life of his Son for yours. He has brought you life 
at the price of the death of his own son. Rest assured that having saved you at such a high price, he will never leave you or forsake you or abandon you in your time of need. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.